Ask any New York driver which highway they hate the most, and you'll probably get the same answer. The BQE is one of the busiest roadways in all the five boroughs. It's also in some of the worst shape. Leaky, rusty, and literally falling apart. More than 130,000 vehicles navigate the Brooklyn Queens Expressway's narrow lanes and countless potholes every day. Despite its terrible reputation, the BQE is actually Brooklyn's only interstate highway, and after years of harsh weather and increasing traffic, sections of it are crumbling. The worst consequence, um, and I don't even want to think about it, is that we have some kind of collapse or some kind of true disaster. While most of us have probably never heard of it, this road is a big deal for New York. If it shuts down, the next best option is for hundreds of thousands of vehicles to drive through narrow residential streets to get to where they need to be. Not exactly great in one of the world's biggest cities. Over the years, temporary band-aids and ideas to fix it have come and gone. There was even a move to tear it all down. Plans for emergency repairs and a long-term strategy to fix the roadway are now being drawn up. But as we know, things are never straightforward in NYC. The city that famously never sleeps also rarely makes construction cheap or easy. This is how New York is racing to fix one of its most important arteries. When you think New York, you'll probably think of its skyscrapers, and then quite possibly its public transit system. But its roadways are just as important. Americans love their cars, and these routes help transport millions of goods, services and people in and out of the five boroughs every day. Some of those roads are now nearly 100 years old, and seemingly in a constant state of repair. Much of the city's ageing transportation system can be attributed to a guy called Robert Moses. He was a famed, if at times controversial, city planner. Throughout the early 1900s, Moses helped design many bridges, parks and roads across New York. One highway he proposed would connect Brooklyn and Queens to help alleviate traffic on the borough's local streets. At first, he suggested a route that would cut right through Brooklyn, but that was shot down. So he changed the route to run along the waterfront, and in 1937, construction of the BQE began. By the time the highway was completed in 1964, construction costs had reached 137 million US dollars. The BQE became one of the first roadways to accommodate both commercial trucks and commuters. Today, it's pretty much critical for the city, and especially for the freight that it relies on. Starting at Grand Central Parkway in Queens, the highway runs for nearly 19 kilometers right round to Red Hook, Brooklyn. It is really the primary trucking route that would connect from southern points of New Jersey up into the city, um, to Brooklyn and to Queens, even into lower Manhattan, and then could be extended to Long Island. There's no other trucking route. Um, and about 10, 15% of the traffic on the BQE is freight at the moment. Its most striking feature is easily its triple cantilever, an eight block, three level structure carved into a wall of land and made of concrete and steel. The three overhanging levels consist of two roadways and an overlook area known as the Brooklyn Promenade. But after years of wear and tear and illegally overweight trucks, much of the road is beginning to disintegrate. And more specifically, the city-owned 2.4km section known as BQE Central. This part includes the triple cantilever, which is sadly in the worst shape of all. The steel inside the concrete is corroding thanks to excessive road salt and water infiltration. Steelwork in the 1950s didn't have any protective coatings. Now, that's obviously a big problem, and engineers are calling for immediate repair. Well, we say immediate. A report from 2016, yes, a report from back in 2016, found that if nothing was done, the city would need to restrict all trucks on the road by 2026. So, city planners and politicians have been sort of racing to put ideas forward to fix it. They've pitched a temporary highway, a road closure, a new tunnel, extensive waterproofing, and even totally demolishing the whole thing. But coming up with a plan that makes everyone happy in New York is next to impossible. And the years have rolled by. 
The only progress so far has been closing one lane of traffic and restricting some truck access. Then in 2022, with a new mayor and federal infrastructure funding on the table, another new approach was announced. We need utmost urgency from the DOT to get it fixed. Mayor Adams' new accelerated plan is set to start in 2023 and it should be cheaper and faster than the previous ideas. It focuses on the critical city-owned section between Atlantic Avenue and Sand Street. City Hall, along with uh, New York City Department of Transportation, um, has started a community engagement process to try to understand the needs and the desires of communities all along the corridor. Of course, there's still a long way to go before everyone's on board, and disagreements could hold things up. Ongoing community meetings will continue for the next couple of years, along with a design process, until official construction work starts in 2026. Meanwhile, interim repairs will ensure the BQE's immediate safety. The cantilever needs the most emergency fixes, and on the Queensbound deck, the concrete and rebar are being replaced. Here, workers will remove the deteriorated concrete, then new steel plates are going to be added for reinforcement. That means overnight lane closures on parts of the highway across a few weekends in 2023. Traffic is due to be rerouted through local streets, and other modes of transportation are encouraged. I'm sure, without a doubt, there will be some traffic issues, there will be some snarls, there will be some inconvenience to the impacted neighborhoods. Um, and I don't mean to minimize that, but at the same time, I think that most people would agree that it's really important to keep the roadway as safe as possible. And if these are repairs that will ensure that people are safe, you know, they need to happen. And unfortunately, there will be some inconvenience involved. But I, I'm hopeful that they have had enough lead time to develop a plan that will mitigate, certainly won't be able to do away with all the impacts, but that will mitigate the impacts as, as best as possible. It's safe to say that repairing the BQE is no longer a future problem. It needs to happen now. Without this construction project, many of the people and freight movements that make New York City run will be badly affected. Some community members are hopeful about the future of the highway. One of the plans that I think people in our community have been excited about is the BQP, the Brooklyn Queens Park plan. What's exciting about it, I think, for people is that it really, it creates tunnels and covers over the cantilever. We have an incredible world-class park in Brooklyn Bridge Park there along the waterfront. It would connect the promenade and sort of parts of Brooklyn Heights and more directly with the park. It would be great to see um, some of the ramps that lead directly off the BQE onto the bridges taken away. Not so much to put traffic into the neighborhoods, but partly because the traffic will evaporate to some extent, can be accommodated differently. And those ramps take up, again, acres and acres and acres of space that could be used in all kinds of different creative ways. The BQE is, of course, just one of many US highways in need of repair. But it powerfully personifies how critical these seemingly simple pieces of infrastructure are to our lives. Fixing this highway underlines the essential nature of construction and creates an opportunity to think more imaginatively about how this industry can reshape our world for the better. This video is made possible by Bluebeam. You can learn more about that at the link below. There's also the chance to dive deeper on this and other topics on our channel over on the World's Best Construction Podcast, available now wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.